Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. So today, uh, or this video, I really want to just talk about some underbodies really quick. Uh, I'm getting ready to start another fly and um, I've had a few messages today uh, about underbodies. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit more and see if maybe I can answer a few more questions. Um, one of the things that you can use for an underbody is Unistretch. So I get a little closer, there you go. This stuff actually works really great. It's the exact same stuff as what I'm using now. This is actually uh, a spool. It's been re-spooled. So actual Unistretch is not on here. Um, what's on there is woolly nylon, which I got off of Amazon. And it's just this. All right. It's like 8 or $10 a spool. And this is what a full brand new spool looks like. And this is one that's used. And I have already spooled five of these. And as you can see, that is very full. When you're wrapping it on, it compacts down real nice. So you can really get a lot onto a spool. This spool will probably last me a year. Maybe a little bit more, depending on how much I tie. I've been tying a lot more lately, so it might last about a year. But I have four of those already that are ready to go. And then I still have this. Um, so I have years worth of material on just one of those spools. And I wound up buying two. I didn't realize it was going to... Uh, I, was, I didn't realize I was going to be able to have so much of it. So really for like... You know, you can spend ten bucks on one of these. And you'll have enough material to last you for a few years. Easy. Um... So, with that, uh, to re-spool it, all I do is I take a pencil, just a regular pencil, and uh, I put the eraser end with the metal into that, into the uh, one end of the um, bobbin hole, or the center hole there, and take the other end and put it into my drill, uh, just a regular screw gun. Um, then I'll take this and set this up. Here, I'll just turn turn this really quick. You'll see I have another vise set up right here, and then I use for holding things. I don't particularly tie with this one anymore, but I'll set it on just like that, run the thread off of this to the new spool, which is on this my screw gun, and you can just use that to uh, put it on and it goes on very quickly um, like I said it piles up really nice and you can get a lot onto one of these little um, spools so um, I highly suggest getting some of that or buying unit stretch I mean if you you know you don't want to go through the hassle of uh, trying to spool it yourself um, you can always buy Unistretch. Uh, I think you can get that right online. Just do a quick Google search and you'll come up with a lot of options. So for the body on this though, all right, you can see here I've tied in the eye, which is uh, that's a silk gut substitute. So this is a monofilament. And with monofilament, it does leave a little bit of a taper there. So what you wind up with is it's thicker up here than it is back here and there's a noticeable okay. so I'm just grab my uh, doubling needle here there's a noticeable spot right here where there's a rise or in this case it drops like you can see it's much thicker right there so what we're going to do is use that body material that uni stretch to lay down in here and get that so that way there's a nice perfect taper from front or from rear to the front. Now another thing that you can do to help that is when you're tying in your materials like uh, at the back end of the fly you've got your tip and your tag so your tip is typically made of tinsel. So you can just take your tinsel and tie that in on the underside of the hook and butt it right up against that right up against that end of the uh, gut eye, whether it's silk gut, monofilament, whatever you're using. And then you can wrap that all the way back. Sorry about 
that. All right, so the tip on this one is going to be about there. So now I'm just going to take my thread and just move that right up out of the way. Um, I just hang that off the back, off one of the knobs on the on the vise, and then uh, I grab my woolly nylon, body my underbody material, and I tie that in. Tie it in same way you tie in thread. A few wraps. And now with the, now you can see with this material, you can see how much it covers and how quickly. And you see how that flattens right out as I wrap? You can see how, how nice and smooth that is. So you can just take that. And I'm just straightening that tinsel out, making sure that that's nice and um, directly right up on the underside of the hook. Kind of similar to what you would do if you had a return eye hook. Uh, if you have one of those return eye salmon hooks, um, you do the same thing with your tinsel. You'd start, you'd bring it up to that return eye and then work your way back on the hook to make up the difference in that. Now on occasion you'll have to stop and you'll have to untwist your thread or your uh, material rather. This is, you'll always be able to tell when it flattens out. See now rocking it back and forth also helps spread it out on the hook. And if you're not sure which direction you need to spin it, just let go of it for, for a minute and it'll spin in the direction that, in the opposite direction of what it's twisted. So um, it'll kind of show you what direction it needs to if you're unable to see the thread and tell which direction it needs to go. So now I'm going to go almost all the way back to where that tinsel is going to start. And then I'm going to work my way back forward. And rocking it back and forth. I, I've kind of gotten into a habit of doing it. Um, just simply because it helps spread everything out so much. And it works so well that by doing that um, it's become something that I do a lot so if you guys see that that's that's why I do that a lot of times I do it and I don't even realize that I've begun doing it now let's say you're in a section of the body like here it's going to need to be a little bit thicker here forward so you don't even have to um, untwist this woolly nylon you can actually just wrap just do it wrap to wrap and that'll pile it up a little bit thicker and it'll still burnish out in the end really nice when you get up to the front though you want to make sure that you go back to spreading that out nice and thin because you don't want to add too much to the front here you've already got enough bulk so here you're the goal for the rest of this fly is to keep bulk down, um, except for this part back here is where you're adding it. So we'll just go through here, and then we'll go back again.
And now to make a proper taper towards the back, as you're doing this, you don't want to go all the way back to where you went before. You don't want to go all the way back to the, the end. You're going to stop short of that. And that's how you slowly start building a taper. And then as you go, it helps to have a little bit of a darker background, so that way you can keep an eye on the edges of the hook as you're wrapping. And you'll be able to see where your high spots and low spots are, and you can start kind of getting directing your thread towards that. And then forward again. This fly is going to have two sections on it. The rear section is going to be tinsel body. The front section is going to be black floss body. So I want this to be pretty smooth. Okay, now you can see we've just about made up most of that. And if you've got fingernails like I do, you can rub that, that um, stretch and smooth it out. Or you can use a burnishing stone, which this is just a, a gate burnisher. Um, I got it on Amazon for pretty cheap. And all this does is just helps spread out those fibers and settle them all into place and level them out. Gives you a nice smooth finish to work with. I think I'm going to do another pass. I want it to be a little bit thicker in the midsection. Okay, and that to me is good enough. I think that's where I'm going to leave that. So then at this point, I'll just do a quick whip finish. I don't do too many. I One wrap around is just enough. Put that off. And then I will add like a little drop of head cement to that just to just to keep it in place. Let's start to unwrap a little bit. Well, we'll just take the burnishing stone and Smooth out that last little bit that I just wrapped. And then remember you'll have floss that goes over this and you'll have other materials that you'll be tying in. So this part will get a little bit thicker as we work on the fly. 
So that's um, that's pretty much just how to get yourself set up with a nice smooth underbody for uh, a fly that requires it. If it was a fly that was going to have a um, a dubbed body, then I probably wouldn't go through so much trouble of you know making this as smooth and uh, paying attention to that. At that point, you can just go ahead and wrap it, wrap on an underbody really quick, just to kind of make up this little difference here. But for the most part, this really wouldn't be much of an interference. Um, but being as how this fly is going to have, um, you know, floss in the front half and um, some smooth flat tinsel in the rear half, I really wanted this to be nice and smooth. So then we'll go back and we'll get our thread out of here. And with the thread, we can just take that and we can go up and start wrapping our tinsel. So, uh, I hope that um, hope this was a little bit helpful, kind of gave you guys a little bit of insight into how to do uh, a smooth underbody and the, uh, the material involved and where to find it. Uh, it's relatively simple and it's something that I think is really a very important technique and it's something that... Uh, a part of a fly that is very important and I really think that uh, you know if you can perfect that and get a nice smooth underbody down the rest will follow because the techniques that you use for a smooth underbody that can carry over into your floss as well so uh, you know keep that in mind and um, hope you guys uh, have some great success with it uh, if you guys like the video give it a thumbs up um, you know like subscribe share um, all the stuff that I, I've said and YouTubers say, I guess, uh, um, you know, it means a lot to me that you guys uh, pay attention to the videos and that they are helping you. It's really great seeing a lot of the comments that uh, you guys enjoy this kind of stuff. So uh, I enjoy making it. It's a whole lot of fun for me, and I'm glad it's a lot of fun for you guys. So until the next video, the next fly will be a barren fly. That is uh, what I've started here. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Keep your post notifications on, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.